Hi guys, RY1 here with two days ARP. Now, as you might have noticed, the last couple of ARPs have been a little bit short and, you know, not really a lot of content in them. We do apologise for that, but we've been quite busy organising a few things and sorting out the uh, grand giveaway on JV and generally had quite busy lives. Uh, normal service is now resumed. So, I mean, Andy's sort of discuss with us his love of steampunk and there's something I wanted to discuss with you and that's my love of post-apocalyptic anything now I love post-apocalyptic anything I, I, I love the idea of how the apocalypse came about to you know how society coped I mean you've got extreme examples like uh, Judge Dredd where basically uh, all the citizens now live in mega cities and uh, you know it's just amazing really how you know even in a future world everything sort of stays the same in regards to people and how they're treated you still got upper class lower class middle class and obviously you still got your dregs and stuff like that and then also on to more sort of different aspects I mean you've got stuff like uh, the fallout world which uh, I am absolutely absorbed into the uh, the whole law of fallout I try and find out as much information as possible I you know I know about a lot about the vaults and which ones were set up to fail and which ones weren't and if you've never read up on that I mean seriously uh, search for the vault on uh, the old Wikipedia's and there's a uh, a wiki specifically for Fallout because all of the games and everything uh, also a fantastic web series called Nuka Cola Break it's well Nuka Break sorry it's called not Nuka Cola Break um, Nuka Break which was made by Wayside Creations and uh, absolutely fantastic it, um, based more in the Mojave than anywhere else uh, but they put their own vault lore in it um, for their main protagonist character Twig and it, it's just really good um, you should really watch that uh, Wayside Creations are a fantastic little uh, independent filmmaking company anyway uh, absolutely fantastic and they are doing a new one uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is but they're doing a new one so go to search for Wayside Creations on your YouTubes yes YouTubes is my friend I spend a lot of time sat in an office on my own so if I'm not talking to you lot on the Facebooks I'm usually on the YouTubes watching something or other and if it's not old wrestling matches then it's usually stuff like this or game stuff uh, anything to do with games really I love video games full stop anything except ET hated ET ET sucked and I played it it's unbeatable because you just get frustrated with it because there's no collision detection or anything it, it's the most half assed game I've ever played and I've played Duke Nukem forever hmm. Now, see that Duke Nukem Forever didn't really bother me because it still had a lot of what made Duke fantastic and I think the, the fact that it took 10 years plus to get to that point was more a testament to the company for actually finally releasing it than anything else but yes I was talking about post apocalyptic stuff um, yeah so then you've also got like your uh, tribal sort of thing which you that happens in Fallout, but it, it's shown in quite a few. Um, Red Steel is a brilliant little uh, post-apocalyptic film. Uh, Mad Max, the original ones. I don't know what the new ones like. I haven't watched it. Uh, the original RoboCop is sort of not post-apocalyptic, but it's dystopian future. Fantastic, um, and that, that's a whole other side of the sort of things I like. I mean, I love that whole dystopian sort of thing. I mean, you look at something like Bioshock, for instance, the, the entire lore behind Bioshock is absolutely fantastic. I mean, Andrew Ryan, 
for instance, in the first game when it actually got to the point, and I'm just going to say this now: this game's old. But spoilers for any of you who haven't played it, and if you haven't played it, skip ahead about a minute. Okay, they should be gone. Right, so the whole point when you get to the end and Andrew Ryan basically makes you kill him. In fact, he does. He, he forces you to kill him. You, you have no control over this whatsoever. Um, <laughs> unbelievable. Because uh, I literally got to a point where you find out about Fontaine and stuff. Um, I really get to a point where I am actually sort of siding with Andrew Ryan. I mean, the whole idea behind uh, Rapture was fantastic. You know, where you're entitled to sweat off your own brow and everything like that. And then it sort of gets corrupted. And this is the whole thing about communism and why communism doesn't work. Uh, because it just doesn't. Because people get greedy and there's always going to be greedy people. And also Andrew Ryan didn't account for the people he had building the fucking place in the first place. So yeah, this whole post-apocalyptic world thing is fantastic. I absolutely adore it. I think it's... It's one of those things, you know, whether it be nuclear bombs, giant mutated ants, like in a film I saw once, I don't know what that was, um, you know, disease, zombification, vampires, werewolves, anything like that. I, I love it. I'm also a big B-movie fan, which might explain a lot about why I love it, because it's a, quite a common thread in B-movies. Um... I also like films with androids in them because I quite like the idea of androids or at least putting my consciousness into an android body so that I can go out and do crazy shit without hurting myself although sometimes I think half of the fun of doing crazy shit is getting away with not hurting myself and the other half of the time it's oh I'm hurt but I'm not hurt too badly so yes but then again people at home don't do crazy shit that will damage you that's your bad um, so yeah, I mean, that's sort of my sort of go-to sort of genre for anything. Um, I'm even trying to write books about the fact. Um, so, yeah, when they're finished, if you all like to read them, I'm sure I can just play you with PDF version or Amazon, the Kindle version, I don't freaking know. Um, but yeah. I'm sure I can get a copy too. Um, but I've been writing those for a while and I find it very difficult to find time to just sit down and do it because when I'm writing I need to have me time. And if I'm at a computer I always tend to log on to Facebook. So usually what I end up doing is taking the computer somewhere where there's no Facebook. So no internet and then I just sit there and just write. I write a lot in um, journals and stuff like that as well and out of the two of us you see I, I do a lot of writing whereas Andy does a lot of artistic stuff he actually makes stuff that looks pretty and most of it looks pretty awesome um, but I like to write which is why when you see a lot of the new channel a lot of it will be written by me and that's not because Andy's not capable, because Andy's helping me a lot in the writing process. Uh, one of the ways I like to sort of dialogue when I'm writing stuff is by actually having the conversation out. I know what I want the characters to say in regards to what I want them to talk about, but sometimes I, I think it I get a more natural conversation by just having two people talk to one another. So like I'll ring Andy and we'll have a conversation or me and Andy will be on the Facebook and we'll just go into character or we'll be on the phone to one another or we'll text one another. Whatever, either way what we do is we have a back and forth as the characters we are portraying. Um, you will find out very quickly that my characters don't speak a lot. And that's not because I'm trying to do a Kevin Smith and do a silent bar but it's just because I generally have the quite thought out quiet characters and that's because 
that's the type of person I am so I find it easier to play those roles every now and then we will switch up and Andy will shut up for a bit I love you bro uh, but you know Andy's more of a natural talker than I am anyway and he doesn't get sidetracked like I do I mean look at this I was talking about post apocalyptic stuff and now I'm talking about writing films but yes and I mean ideally I'd love to like write and direct a post apocalyptic film but it's getting more difficult to find the sort of places where you'd be able to film that because a lot of places get redeveloped or get built over or just generally aren't safe to be in and I can't in all good conscience put people in a dangerous situation if it was me or me and Andy then yeah how because I'd say to Andy yeah I, I want to go and do some filming here can I borrow the tripod and he'd be like yeah where are we going and I'd be like yeah I'm going to this abandoned nuclear bunker it's not very safe so I don't want anybody there and he'd be like yeah come on let's go because you know crazy real crazy so that's that I waffled on for a bit but I will talk some more on it so here is my question to Andy which is your favorite post-apocalyptic cause what's your apocalypse cause more to the question what would be your favorite thing to cause an apocalypse for instance it could be a a nuclear blast or a nuclear war a la fallout it could be the downfall of civilization by just being general jerks a la Mad Max I think there was some more in the resource wars or something like that. it could also be zombie virus uh, or a mutation of some description it could be alien conquest it could be a giant meteorite that impacts and destroys half the planet. It could be uh, the oceans rise and flood the planet, which, by the way, just while we're on that subject, is actually impossible. For those of you out there who believe in this whole, the, uh, the wars are rising, that's not actually true. What's happening is the land is being eroded by the water. Now, I admit that the polar ice caps are melting and that's sad, but we are in a warm up after coming out of a ice age. Now, generally speaking, when you come out of an ice age, the earth gradually gains temperature over the years. Now, you will notice if you go to your local Met office and have a look at the figures that every year temperatures on average have actually gone up. There will be a few abnormalities. There are always abnormalities in any scientific procedure, but you will notice in general the temperatures have, on average will probably have gone up. Now, those of you out there who are scientifically minded, I would like to remind you about buoyancy and displacement. Now, it is true that only a third or a quarter of uh, an iceberg is actually visible above water level which means that the rest of it is below water level but that iceberg is also more dense than water okay there is more volume to it if you took this glass up here filled it with water and froze it and then unfroze it the level of water in the glass would stay the same same as if you have filled it and put a couple of ice cubes in it when the ice cubes melt it should stay the same the level is when the ice was put into the glass not when the glass was filled with water you better understand that the ice is going to be in the glass when you take the level um, so therefore displacement proves that when the ice caps mount the water level will stay the same ish that will be good little change I would imagine but then again I mean there's been a shit ton of shit that we've put into the ocean over the years and there might be extra fish at the bottom in the trenches that you don't know about that would uh, increase displacement therefore increasing the uh, water levels 
and therefore also an un unknown quantity as we know about 10% of the Earth's oceans where we have completely mapped the Earth and Mars. If we can map Earth and Mars but we can't map our own oceans, I am not going to believe anybody who tells me I shouldn't be eating meat and I should recycle because you know these machines that you're recycling with are run from fossil fuels. Now I admit we've all got to go a little bit green and you know a bit more solar panels would be cool but it's a big ass because there is a lot of expense that goes into them. Also the same as electric cars. Now for instance the battery on a Prius goes around the globe about six times before it's even fully manufactured and sent off to the factory and that's been in fossil fuels as well so the carbon footprint on one of those is about the same as a 10 year old vehicle when it's brand new so I'm just saying I'm, I'm old school I like to use things until they break and then I like to get them fixed it's not possible with everything because sometimes technology moves on and unfortunately you know, we have to move on with it but uh, cars and anything like that then I don't see an issue anyway now I'm laughing about science and shit and it's it's hurting my head and because I hadn't planned any of this and if I'd have planned it I would have had all things so yes so what's your post apocalyptic course also I thought it might be nice in the videos after these if we did five facts about ourselves that nobody knows so start thinking about those two because when you do yours I'll have a response to your video and my five facts so there we go so I've been RY1, you've been my favourite little Arplings. Now remember if you want to be part of ARP then message me or Andy and we will sort that out for you. And also if you have anything to say on the post-apocalyptic or apocalypse um, vein then please do. If you would like to defunct my uh, scientific theories regarding the ice caps then feel free. Uh, if you can show me evidence I'm more than happy to look at it. And I don't want anything from the Daily Mail. You should all know why. I would rather take the Sunday sport over the mail. Um, and we all know how factual that is. Uh, but the only thing they can get right is a woman's measurements, and they very rarely get that right. Anyway, uh, also a note uh, keep supporting the FBI. Very, very important for everybody. Uh, we need to make sure the FBI is supported because they are cool people's and they are fighting very hard for us so it's very important also send some love to any Welsh rapers you know they're fighting their own battle at the moment oh, cat. Um, and generally guys spread the love don't get angry when people tell you that these are just as bad as smoking it's like I've always said educate because without the education people are never going to know the truth the media won't do it for us so let's do it for them okay so I've been all I want you have all been fantastic little halflings as per usual like comment share favorite whatever you want to do with this video leave a comment and say you know yeah I think you're right about the ice caps are going wrong um, we will if you want at some point have a proper scientific debate on everything and I have my sources of information somewhere around here and should be able to give a good scientific uh, evidence for my claim but without evidence that's all it is is a claim so remember guys vape safe yeah, yeah, yeah.